Good morning, everyone. I join Dr. Felipe in welcoming all of you and hope that this morning brings inspiration, fraternity, and hope for all of us. I will have the honor of introducing four great scholars. Each of them will present a different topic for 15 minutes. And then we will open a moment for questions you might have about their presentation. So, our first speaker is Daniela Niño Giraldo. Daniela studied international business in Uninorte in Colombia. She also holds a bachelor's degree in philosophy from the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross, Santa Croce. Currently, she is pursuing a master's degree in philosophy at Santa Croce as well. Her area of interest focuses on the study of the development of personality as a fundamental element for achieving happiness. The topic she will share with us today is titled Exploring Temperaments Enhancing Relationships. Please help me to welcome Daniela with a warm applause. Thank you, Tere, and thank you all for being here today. It's an honor to be able to talk um, a little bit of uh, this topic that I, seen from my experience, I have seen uh, that it's really important to de develop our relationship sh relationships and to know better ourselves. So let's start, right, because we have 15 minutes. Um, these points, right? Yeah. So, what are we going to talk about? First, what are they? What is what's temperaments? Then, the types. The R four. I will just say say that right now, and how to identify them, and uh, to conclude, their impact in relationships. So, let's imagine a tree, right? And that this tree is. Each one of us, it's a person. In the basis here, we have the roots. We can say in these roots, we have the temperaments. Not only the temperaments, but we also we have it there. So it's the natural way in which a human being interacts with the environment. It's not something that uh, has to be with your will. I, I want to be... I don't know, choleric, you will understand later. I want to be a th a phlegmatic. No, you are something, it's in our genetics to say that, like that, but it doesn't determine who we are because the person is not only here in the roots. So when we start to grow, we also have, we, can, we start to develop our character. There are these natural dispositions that we have here in, in the bottom and also uh, like integrated with uh, the environment, with the things that, are, that happen, our childhood, um, uh, the people with which we interact the most, at, for example, our parents and so on. And then we arrive to the whole tree that has also leaves and can also produce fruits. And that's our personality, that someday I hope I can talk about it. It's not, it won't be today, I have to study about it. But uh, it's like a global interaction, integration, sorry, of ourselves. And when our roots are well known, uh, our char character is well constructed, constructed, the personality, it's, it's really wide, it's really nice, and it's unique as well. So, now, to uh, know about the temperaments, we have to know that um, we need to imagine a little bit. So, we are going to associate temperaments with the four elements. So, try to imagine with me all the things that I will try to say right now. So, first, two important characteristics to identify our temperament. If we, are, we have a hot or a cold uh, impression of something. So let's go back. Temperament is the way I react when I have a, a natural reaction of something that happens in the environment. So that reaction can be hot or it can be cold. What is, it also can be dry or humid. Okay, so 
what is hot? Hot, imagine fire. It expands. It goes, you know? <laughs> expands. So, and it also has a fast reaction. For example, something scared me, <laughs> I scream. You know, it comes out. That expands. It's hot. Like the molecules. The hot molecule is like going everywhere. But like the cold, the cold molecules, they are all together. I'm not a phys physician person, but I think it's like that. So they are all together and they contract and they concentrate. So these two first like, ways of identifying. Hot, expands, cold, contracts. And also we have dry and humid, as I said. So dry, it resists, you know, something dry, for example, um, the, the sand, that it's kind of dry, it, because you know, the rock is even drier. If you want to put your finger in there, it will be hard to, it won't be easy to go inside. You can do it, but, mm, you know? So you need a, a little bit of more pressure to put your, your finger inside. And when you put, and you, you are able to put your finger inside, it leaves a mark. In the other hand, you have the humid, for example, the water. If I put my finger here, I won't do that. <laughs> I will take it, I will put it really easy, in an easier way than in the sand. But you won't know that I put my finger in the water just by looking the water, because it recovers its normal state, position, easily. So it has superficial marks. It's difficult to go deep into something. So humid, the impressions are superficial. Dry, the impressions, when some, it's difficult to have an impression. But when you have that impression, it leaves a profound mark. So these are like the principal guides. If we can like manage to see ourselves in some of these things, it will be easier to identify our temperament. Because sometimes we leave the temperaments in, uh, I don't know, a scene maybe, or like something wrong, or a simple characteristic. But here, with the, with the nature observing, do, uh, doing that exercise of observing, we can see something a little bit more, like deeper, <laughs> a little bit deeper, to understand. So uh, how do I react within a situation? So I expand or I contract. I'm, I'm more humid, I can involve as water, I put my, my finger, it also involves, it covers, but when I take it out, it's like, okay, anything happened, or something comes, it's difficult to come in, but when it comes in, it stays, it, the mark stays, that is dry. So now, knowing this background, let's see the temperaments. First, we have the choleric in this, uh, Quadrant, it says quadrant, wheel, yes, this quadrant. Uh, so as we can see, the choleric is hot and it's dry. So first, he expands, the choleric expands. He wants to, to dominate. So imagine the fire. If, you, if, if a fire starts, you, don't, you cannot really conduce the fire wherever you want to. It starts going everywhere taking everything that is there and burning everything. So it goes, it's determined, it's strong. It, it, it want, it, he wants to take the space and dominate in a way. But also it's dry. So um, I like to say, I listened this once and I like it. Imagine an spaghetti, a spaghetti. So a, uh, uh, how do you say crudo? Raw spaghetti, uh, raw spaghetti, you can move it, but it doesn't like moves seeds, 
it doesn't, yeah, see this? Uh, easily. But if you do a lot, a lot of, lot of, of uh, not a lot of not, right? But a little bit more of pressure, it, it breaks. It breaks. And you cannot put it back. In the other side, the humid, you, you put a little bit of water, warm water in that spaghetti. If you do this, it moves. It moves. It doesn't break. It doesn't give that profound mark. Here, yes, the choleric, uh, he has that profound mark. It resists to be marked because he wants to impose, in a way, his position, his thoughts, and everything. Uh, but when something gets into him, it really, really gets. So it, they have a really good memory also, um, an effective memory also. But in this, the melancholics are better. Um, second, we have the sanguine. Sanguines, do we say like, uh, it's okay? Thank you. Sorry, my English is not that good. Um, the sanguines, we can represent them with the air. So, as we can see, we are here, they're all at the top. They're all hot, choleric and sanguines. So, sanguines, they also expand the air. <sighs> you know, it comes and <sighs> it fills the, the space. Um, but and it can involve, you know, you cannot see where is it. Like, he, the, the air starts to go everywhere. But then it's difficult um, to, uh, to go deeply because it just disappears in the space in such a way. So for the sanguine, uh, it's good and it's important to, to go and expand to involve with the others, and also, and this is really, really nice with the sanguines, and is that they uh, care more for, uh, with other people because they have this humid characteristic. That is the difference b b uh, with the choleric. Sometimes you can think the choleric is, oh my God, he's there, wanted to, uh, willing to hear me, help, willing to help me. But in our natural, natural, natural way, I'm a choleric, and the natural thing is like, I want to give you the solution <laughs> because I have the answer. <laughs> you know, it's not always like that, as I said. This is just like the natural impulse, yeah, this position. But here, the sanguine, he wants to know that you are good. You know, like so, uh, some girls that were here were like, should we go to welcome the people that are outside? You know, I, I'm worried about that. I, I'm worried to go and I give you a hug and say, are you okay? It's everything fine? Hello. Da, da. So they are expansive and they bring sort of a joy that it's very sanguine. It's really good. I really like it. So it's a different way of being expansive. It's humid. It involves. It makes you feel uh, you are uh, care. You're special. You're there. It's, it has more contact uh, with the person. Uh, the, with the person's need right? in, in order to serve me, better. Uh, the sanguine wants to uh, agradar, to please the others. They find pleasure in that. Oh my God. The melancholic, <laughs> the melancholics, they, um, they, you know, they are, they are dry, you know, as the cholerics. So as I show you, difficult to, to put the, the finger inside a little bit. The rock is even harder. But then the mark uh, leaves, uh, leaves there. So this is not a sad person. That is something that everyone says, and it's not true. Melancholics is not equal sad person. It's a really profound, a profound, deep person. Uh, it can go really deep into relationships. And the thing is that instead of expanding, he goes inside. So all the things that are happening in the, in the outside, they take it to them. And they have a whole world going inside, and, they, and the other ones don't know that they are struggling with such a lot of things inside of them. Um, and they can... Uh, 
they need like th th they need to look for a way to exteriorize. But sometimes us and here I will uh, attach it with relationships. We need to know this to know how to relate with these people. Me as a choleric, for a long time in my life, I pushed melancholics in a wrong way. Like, go, 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 you have to do it. And I was just scaring the person. It's not the way. It's not the way. It's not the way to, to because cholerics, they like challenges. They like, yeah, challenges. But it's not the way a melancholic will work uh, to do something better. So then you can see here the melancholic that contracts, so it's inside, it's profound. He has a great memory because of that, because it goes, goes, and it marks, but it's also dry. And besides that, we have the, the water, the phlegmatic, that he's, he contracts, but he can involve really, really well, really, really well. So it's a good, good listener, because, you know, he just stays there, but, for example, it comes a fire, and I'm, I'm like me, I'm, this is happening, and the phlegmatic is there, listening. And you feel that the person is listening to you, it's taking, it, like, it's really caring about what you're saying. Because it has this uh, humid thing that involves, that comes inside. So, just to conclude, um, why does it have an impact in relationships, knowing temperaments? Because we, we are able to know each other better. We are able um, to understand people better and to love more. When we start to know that it's just the nature of the other one, and it's not, it's not to, uh, like a way of not educating ourselves and like, ah, I'm like this and, and you have to live with it, or you are like that and stay like that, with that defects, the, our sins and all that. No, it's not about that. It's about that sometimes my nature might make me think that your nature is wrong, but it's just your characteristic. And I will finish with this uh, thing that happened to me when I was really little. I was like, I think, three or four years old. I was in my house and uh, my, I don't know, my brother had some turtles. And, I, and they were in the balcony, balcony. And I was seeing that turtle. And it didn't move. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, like, uh, it was too much for me. So I shot the turtle and she went through the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are you so slow? <laughs> and I didn't understand that it was just its nature. The turtle will arrive, like the turtle and the... Maybe the turtle can be even more constant and at the end give a better result than a liebre. I don't know how to say liebre. Here. Here. But... It's just, it's natural characteristic. And we, like, knowing this makes us more patient. And being more patient, that is uh, something that we acquire when we start to know better about something, so to know better about the people, then we can love more. We can give each other in a better way. We can serve better. Because temperament is not to say, like, this is the way I am, and you have to deal with it. But I have some natural characteristics that makes me also unique, and I want to be better for you, and I want to integrate it with you that are different, that, and, and have characteristics that are special and necessary to make like, something to be warm. And like, that, that's, that's what I like about fire, and this I really end, sorry, Teddy. Um, that, when you are going to do a churrasco, a barbecue, you have the uh, carbono, carbono, charcoal, you know, rock. Let's see earth. We have uh, the air to make it heat up, to heat it up. Maybe if it's too, uh, if it's too much, you put a little bit of water to make it go down, and then it starts to 
eh, brasa. So you get the, the, I have the word, I would look for it. Brasa is like the perfect temperature to cook the meat. To grill. To grill. Yes, to grill. Not to burn the meat, but to grill, to give warm, and not to burn everyone. Then you integrate temperaments, you integrate relationships, and you see that it's beautiful like to be different and to relate with others and to grow and love better, knowing better the other ones. And I believe that a stronger personality uh, can gently lead others to happiness, gently. It's not an imposition, but gently. And that's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Daniela, for this amazing, useful, dynamic presentation. I especially liked how you explained very accurately and with examples each of the temperaments, so thank you for that. Now we have a small space for questions. If anybody would like to ask Daniela a question, if you can please raise your hand. While, while you think about it, I, I have one. <laughs> um, Dani, can you tell us a little bit more about um, if and how can temperaments also um, like um, intersect or have an influence on spirituality, on how we relate to God, how we pray? Sure, I, re I really like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, I, I saw once, like, for example, a choleric praying. And you're like, okay, let's see. Um, Jesus Christ, um, I, I'm reading, and like, he, he, I'm reading a meditation, right? So he was in the cross. And he gave all his blood f it, uh, there for us. So let's imagine that scene. Is there are the disciples and, um, and Jesus in the cross. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, definitely, God, I know. He gave his life for me. He's going to, uh, he's, he, he saved me, and he will save me right now for all the struggles I'm, I'm going through. And, da -da 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 -da, and you go, and you determine, and you give solutions, and you are reading the, 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 the gospel, but you are, like, all, already giving, like, determination to that. Like, it, it, it expands, mm -hmm. you know? So you need to talk, you need, like, in this, in, inside, like, in the, in the silence also mm -hmm. of your heart. But you give answers, like mm -hmm. the choleric g wants answers, so, mm -hmm. and, and likes to um, understand, give a reason for that thing, you know? But like, uh, the phlegmatic, maybe, I don't know, like, like, Jesus was in the cross, he was in the cross. <laughs> Mary was there, Mary was there. <laughs> uh, and John was also there. Oh, John was also there. <laughs> what's, what's happening? <laughs> but what's the thing, and I couldn't say that, and I take this also to say it, with a phlegmatic, you put the finger and you take it out, you don't see it, right? But put a lemon and leave it for a long time. Mm -hmm. For a long time. That water will take the color and the flavor of the lemon. So that's why phlegmatics, they need a lot, a lot of time. And you need to give them time for them to take that for them and to leave the mark. So it's not like they, they, don't, they cannot be just five minutes there in the fast prayer, but they need constantly being like introduced, being like face to face mm -hmm. with the truth, as we say, with, the, with, the, with that spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. And also for the phlegmatic example, for example, it's important to have references, like persons, like real references in order for him or her mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. uh, how to live. Mm -hmm. Because imagine a, a, a river, if you make a channel mm -hmm. besides the river, the water will go there in that direction and will go in that direction. Mm -hmm. It won't go to it in another direction. 
the fire start to burn also the, the, the leaves of the trees and everything. Mm -hmm. So the pneumatic, when he has or she has a clear reference of something, he can, um, he can go and transform also his nature and go deeply. Even though he's superficial by nature, he can go deeply, 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 deeply. Mm -hmm. And people say that, for example, St. Thomas was a pneumatic. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting uh, because they also have a quality of controlling emotions. They don't expand as choleric sanguine, like, hey, I'm happy, I'm sad, I'm... No, they can take decisions, like, uh, take, uh, like, decisions um, with, uh, without involving their emotions. So they are really objectives. They're good, they're really, really good leaders for me. Like, I really love phlegmatics. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, a choleric uh, Santa, Santa Teresa de Avila. Mm -hmm. You know? She spends how many monasteries, no, she did, no, no, boom, let's do. If you read, like, what she writes, it's like, you have to have, like, the, the uh, uh, strong, Internal strong, sense. you know, it gives you like uh, strong strength. The, and um, you can find a sang sanguine, mm -hmm. maybe that also, as it he, he or she is superficial, for prayers, uh, it, it's necessary to have the, a, an appropriate environment for prayer. This is really important for sanguines because they distract easily. Mm. So if you have a if they're going to pray in a chapel where are people coming in and out uh, the whole time where some, uh, some, I don't know, person is cleaning, the sanguine will be looking at the person cleaning, will not look at the cross. No, no, it won't happen. It's difficult. Naturally, it will be more difficult to concentrate. So then you try to find a, a good place that will it make you interiorize a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Now, melancholics, they can go inside easily, right? Mm -hmm. So I think something interesting and that I like to say about melancholics is that a spiritual work that melancholics should do, it's my opinion, mm -hmm. is um, look outside mm -hmm. and be in the reality mm -hmm. and um, be grateful to the Lord and take their uh, prayer also as a way of praising, mm. you know? Uh, like, I also write, take a paper and write. I'm grateful because of this, thank you Lord, because of this, 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 concrete, in the reality. Because sometimes melancholics can go deeply and create a totally big movie of something that is not quite as it is, as it is, there, as the reality is, mm -hmm. because they create something inside, so they need to go out, and there in the outside, see the Lord, see the greatness of God, greatness of mm -hmm. God, see that He loves me, and I am really grateful about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's just like, of course, we can talk about a lot of ways of living spirituality for each temperament, mm -hmm. but. Just uh, but yes, these are just thank some comments. You. Thank you, thank, thank you, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Thank you, thank you. That was really interesting. Uh, my question is: Do we have one temperament, or do we have a mix? Uh, can we have a mix of like two or three? I don't know. Nice. Yes. Well, actually. Um, it's something that is in our nature, right? We we are born with a with a, nat a temperament, but um, they are like you can move. This is just to give you like a, an easy way to identify. But it's not that all cholerics are dry, dry, dry. For example, or all melancholics are like the sand. Also, that's why it's interesting to see the the elements of the nature because earth can be sand, can be moistly, uh, moistly, moistly, mm -hmm. moisty. So more like going to the humid area, you can find a melancholic like that. You can also find a melancholic that is dry, 
dry, a little bit drier, that it's the rock. You can find a phlegmatic that it's uh, colder and it's like it's it's more like an ice, or a phlegmatic that it's more going mm -hmm. to evaporating, you know, more like through the air. So these movements, they they also happen, but it's more because of the integration with our environment. So we are born with one of them, and then they start to move, and we start to build our character, because uh, depending on our reality, our culture, uh, our family, the people that impact us, they, we also acquire some traces, traces, or no, that word doesn't exist, no, some no. characteristics oh. uh, of the other people. So that's why it's really complex, you know, the person is really complex. I believe, this is my, in my opinion, um, it's one of them, but it moves. You know, you are phlegmatic and you move uh, uh, in a more humid part or more um, uh, cold part. And then also the interaction with other temperaments, with other people, it will build your character and then personality. So, I don't know if I answered, but. Thank you, Daniel. Last question here with Karina. Oh, Daniela, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. Uh, I have two questions. One of them is, uh, what was Jesus' temperament? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the second one is, do we know in percentage uh, how many people, uh, cholerics, there are in the world? Like, most people, who are they? Mostly, for example, sanguinics or mostly melancholics? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Well, actually, I was thinking about that when I was taking a bath this morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, because I was thinking about uh, Pedro, P Peter, uh, P Peter, Peter and, and Jean, and it was like really interesting. Peter is really expensive. He wanted to talk ah, like uh, I will die, uh, Jesus. I will die, uh, and and people will betray me, and and Peter's immediately, I won't betray you. I will be there until the end. But then, oh. <laughs> but here, <laughs> like, and John, we don't see a lot of talks with about like John talking too much, I don't know. Uh, but he was able to recognize Jesus. In resurrection, he recognized Jesus. It was John who told Petrus, Pedro, Peter is the Lord. And then, I think, he, I think Pedro, I, I know it's not your question because I will say after. I, I was thinking that when I was t taking a bath, I think, I, I think Peter is a sanguine. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know, goes, but then, you know, <laughs> then, uh, but then the air goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he's in the, in the in more superficial area, and look, where he came before, what he became before, after, yeah. sorry. So that's the nice thing, but okay, here. Um, and then he couldn't recognize, he couldn't see beyond as John could. This is the Lord. So you see a more profound thing in John, in, in John not saying that one is better than the other one, they <laughs> complement. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm Jesus. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I don't know. I d never thought about yes. I have a question. I, I already said about that. And the person, the person who told me that told me that Jesus was the four. Was the four? Yeah. Nice. So he was like, in my what I, I was taught is that we we can be like we we don't are we are not just one. We are like a mix. And uh, the, the goal is to become like Jesus, to be the four. But I don't know if it's true. I mean, that, I think it's a di different way to see that. But uh, yeah, that, 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 that's it. Nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know if it's true. Yeah, thank you. I, yes, it's that. Well, my answer will be, as Jesus is presented with a strong personality, it's difficult to identify the temperament. The temperament is the basic part. 
And that's why I put this first image here. Because our big problem is that sometimes we get into this age acting like this. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to identify the temperament here. Mm -hmm. But not because it will be normal to do it. Mm -hmm. It's because here it's already integrated with my person, with who I am. It should be like that when I'm in this age. But we stay here and now we have to struggle with almost 30 years to look how I <laughs> acquire some virtues to, to be uh, in, real, in my real age. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's difficult to understand Jesus' temperament because he had a strong personality. And then uh, it, it will be difficult to see like the natural response coming like naturally. No, I have virtues, I have uh, circumstances, I have a lot of things that already made this grow. grow. You know, when you go and see the tree, this is under the, 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 the ground. Mm -hmm. But it's important to know about it, because if not, we will not understand a lot of things. Well, that's my, that might, might, be, might be my answer. And about the, the statistics, I don't know, actually. I couldn't answer that. If there are studies about how many people are choleric, sanguines, I don't know. But... We could do it in our community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Help me to thank Daniela, please.